Hey everyone, it's Ian, and in today's lecture I'm going to be showing you how to do image upload with Node using Express. So I have a GitHub repository already set up with instructions and example code. You can find it at github.com slash nax3t slash image underscore upload underscore example. And I'll put this link inside of the video description as well. So if you scroll down to the readme, you can see all the instructions here. This is what we'll be going off of. So I've already downloaded uh, Colt's final version of Yelp Camp, which I have here. So the first order of business is to go to Cloudinary and create a Cloudinary account. So this is cloudinary.com. This is the web service that we're going to use to, or the cloud service that we're going to use to store our images online and then be able to connect to those images from our application. So go ahead and sign up for free and then whenever you signed up uh, you'll have a dashboard that you log into. You're going to get an email from Cloudinary that will ask you to verify your account and you must verify it to be able to use Cloudinary in your application. So once you're logged in it'll give you a little pop-up window asking you about some things. You can just close it out. Um, the important thing is that you create a cloud name and then you'll have your API key and then your API secret, which you'll click reveal. I'm not gonna do that because I don't want you all to see what mine is, but you're gonna be able to use that in your application to uh, authenticate yourself with Cloudinary. Okay, so opening up our application in the terminal, we need to install a couple of packages. So we'll do an NPM, let me make this a little bit bigger npm i-s that's short for npm install dash dash save and then we'll do multer and then a space between it and the next package name is going to be cloudinary so we'll let those install and you can see in your package json file that we now have cloudinary and multer so the next order of business is going to be to update our form. So if you open up the views directory, campgrounds subdirectory, and then the new EJS file, you have your form. I'm going to go back to the tutorial and I'm just going to copy this code, but then I'll explain to you what's going on uh, line by line. So on step three, I just copy this code right here, the HTML well, with EJS syntax and I will replace what I have and so not a whole lot of changes going on here but the two important things are that we add the ENC type equals multi-part slash form data that's what allows us to have the uh, file upload feature so then inside of the input that we had before as type equals text we've changed it to type equals file we've given it a label so that we know what the input is for and then we give it an ID that matches with the labels for attribute, so image, image. And then we give it a name. This is important. Name is equal to image. And uh, right here, the accept image is going to make it to where you can't upload by default any other files other than image files. And then we make it required. So the other things that we changed are the name attributes for the uh, name and description we changed it to campground name and campground description so that we can pull uh, all the information from this form in a rec.body.campground object using uh, body parser. Okay, so go ahead and save that file and we'll move on to updating our route code. So we've got a section of configuration code that we need to copy and paste into our project and this will allow us to have Molter and Cloudinary configured and connected to our uh, Cloudinary account. So I'm going to copy this and open up. I'll go ahead and close the routes, or sorry, the views, and I'll open up the routes. So routes campgrounds.js. And you can just put this right below uh, whatever your last required uh, package is. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this in here and let's talk about what uh, exactly we're doing. So we're requiring Molter. Uh, that's the package we installed a moment ago. 
and then we're creating a storage variable and we're telling the we're configuring the multer dot storage uh, method with this object and we're but what, what we're doing is whenever the file gets uploaded we're creating a custom name for that file so the name that we're going to use is going to have the date the current uh, timestamp plus the original name of the file so below that we have an image filter which we're going to plug in down here we'll talk about that in a second but basically this filter makes it to where any image or any file rather that gets uploaded with the uh, file upload feature in the form must have an extension of JPEG, JPEG with an E, PNG, or GIF, or GIF, or however you pronounce it. Okay, uh, that will return an error if um, someone tries to upload like a PDF or the text file, HTML, etc. And it just says, hey, only image files are allowed. And you can customize that however you see fit. So we create an upload variable and we use the uh, multer object up here and we pass in some configuration items as key value pairs inside of an object. So we pass in storage as storage, that's that storage variable that we created. And then we pass in file filter as image filter, that's that image filter variable that we created. So once you've done that, your multer is configured in these lines right here, six through 19. And then we move on to setting up Cloudinary. So first we have to require Cloudinary. That's the NPM package that we uh, installed. And then to configure it, we do a Cloudinary.config. And for that method, we pass in an object that has some key value pairs, uh, first being cloud name. And you're gonna get this right here from your dashboard. So if you go back to Cloudinary.com, you should have a cloud name right here that you created uh, whenever you first signed up. So this is just the, um, the name for my email without the at gmail.com. So I copy that and I paste it here. Then it wants your API key and your API secret. I'm using uh, environment variables so that you can't see my um, secret or my key. Obviously the key is not a big deal. It can be public so you could just copy it directly and paste it in right here. And then the secret uh, I would use environment variables. If you've been following along with some of my other tutorials, then you know about .env. I'm not gonna explain how to set that up, but I will show you what I'm talking about. So you just go to .env. The very first one is npm, or the second one is the GitHub, uh, which I would also go to. So you can go to the GitHub from here, or just follow these usage instructions. So install .env. You're gonna copy this line, and put it at the top of your app.js. And then you're gonna create a file called .env. So it's a hidden file inside of your uh, root parent directory of your project. And inside that file, you're gonna create these uh, key value pairs. So in this case, you would create Cloudinary API secret is equal to, and then inside of Cloudinary, you would reveal your secret and you would set it equal to that. If you have any questions about that, let me know. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, it, if worse comes to worse, you can just paste in your API secret directly. I don't recommend that, especially not in production or if you're uploading your code to like GitHub or somewhere in a public repository where other people can see it. Um, but if you just want to get it working in development, then that's like a quick workaround. Okay, uh, just make sure if you're using Git that you don't add or commit after you put your secret in there because then you have to take some extra steps to remove it out of Git, which is uh, kind of complicated. Okay, so assuming that you have all that configured, um, that's pretty much it. Now the next order of business is to go into your post route where the form is gonna submit to, and you're going to actually set it up to where it takes the file that gets uploaded and uh, it sends it to uh, Cloudinary, and then it stores it in the database. So. Here's our current post route. We're gonna go back to the tutorial, scroll down. Uh, these steps are the ones I've already gone through just now. Uh, so we'll go down to step number eight, and we need to add this upload single image to our post routes middleware chain. So just copy this line right here, go back to your code, and on my code anyway, um, on line 47, this is where the router.post is. 
Currently it just has one middleware function, middleware is logged in, and then it has our callback with the rest of our route code. So I'm gonna paste over that, and now you can see that it's the same thing. I just added after a comma, the upload.single image. And this is the image that we have right here, okay? So um, now we wanna replace this code right here. This is just the body of our post route. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of everything that's inside of there and go back to the tutorial. And I'll copy this little segment right here. And that's step nine, by the way. And paste it in. Okay, so the formatting's a little bit off. Um, oh well. Anyway, so uh, we use Cloudinary that we required and configured up above. It has a dot uploader dot upload method and then we pass in rec.file.path. So rec.file is coming from Multer, and this is gonna be the name of the file that just got uploaded from the form, which if you remember from up top, we configured to be the timestamp plus the original file name. So if you upload a file called uh, like beautifulsunset.jpg, then it's gonna be you know 0001257 blah blah blah, uh, beautifulsunset.jpg. So, we upload it and we get a result back from Cloudinary. Uh, if you look at the Cloudinary documentation, um, let's see here, Cloudinary, we'll look at the NPM package docs. Then you can see an example somewhere in here of the, the result object. And you can see it has all this information about the image. Uh, most importantly, the secure URL which is the HTTPS, uh, the secure HTTPS URL, as opposed to the regular one that doesn't have the S at the end. Um, so we want that URL and we want to store it into our database and that will reference the image in Cloudinary back inside of our uh, project. So we do that right here. We have rec.body.campground.image which we are creating. Okay, so rec.body.campground currently has two different values stored in it. It has the name and it has the description, okay? And we are going to add to that object a image field or property and set it equal to the result.secure URL. And so now it's gonna set that URL that we were just looking at, well, the URL for this specific image anyway, equal to uh, the image property on the campground object. And then we want to create the uh, author just like we did previously. So I just say rec.body.campground.author is equal to an object and in that object I plug in the ID, uh, set it equal to the rec user ID and then the username is rec user username. Now we're ready to pass in the rec.body.campground object into campground.create. So we pass that in we check to see if there's an error. If there is an error, then we'll go ahead and use uh, Flash, Connect Flash, to send that error message back to the view, at which point we return a redirect back to the previous page we were on. So this would redirect us back to wherever we were previously in the app, and at the same time it would tell you what happened um, that went wrong. So there's a couple different ways you can do error handling. Um, this may or may not be the best way, um, but it's a quick fix to get it working and you can come back and deal with that later. So the return will return out of this entire thing and it will skip res.redirect. So anytime you have a return inside of a function, then whatever comes after it doesn't get executed. Okay. So the other way would be to put an else statement here, but I don't want it to be that verbose. So we use return here in the event of an error. Now, if the error doesn't happen, awesome. That means our campground got created successfully and stored in the database. So at that point, we're going to redirect back to slash campgrounds, and then we append the newly created campgrounds ID to the end of it, and that'll get us down here to the show route where we're redirecting back to a specific campground using its ID. So assuming this works, let's go ahead and save. Go back to the tutorial. Uh, where is it? Okay. And the tutorial just has a couple more notes regarding um, 
the Google Maps feature. Many of you probably already have Google Maps and you're not even necessarily working from the final version of Colt's app. You're working from like, I don't know, two or three more versions since that with some of the features that I've uh, created tutorials for previously. If that's the case, then go ahead and put all this code that we just created inside of the callback for the geocoder.geocode method if you're using Google Maps. Um, or you could reverse it if you wanted. You could put the geocoder.geocode code inside of the callback for Cloudinary. Either way, uh, one of those two has to be inside the callback for the other. Uh, if you're not using Google Maps in your application, then you can just totally forget about that. Don't worry about it. Uh, another note is that this tutorial that we're doing right now is specifically for creating a campground, not for editing a campground. Uh, I'll probably make another video later for editing. It's going to be very similar. You're going to just check to see if the user uh, uploaded a new picture. If they did, you want to delete the old picture and replace it with the new one and then update the campground and the database. Uh, but we're not going to fool with that right now because I don't want this video to go on for too long. So with everything saved, we're going to go ahead and run our server and check to see if everything works. I'm going to go in app.js and because I'm working locally on my computer and not in C9, I just need to change this right here so that I use a different port uh, than the port that is used uh, by C9, which is 8080. So I'm going to use 3000 and I will run my Mongo daemon server. And then in another tab, I'll run no daemon. Uh, this is the same as node app.js is just a uh, many of you probably have already seen me use this package but anyway so I'm running no daemon it says it can't find cookie parser no problem uh, we'll just go ahead and install that real quick and you you may not run into this error this is something that has to do with um, how Colt's app was set up uh, he may not have had cookie parser inside of um, his package JSON anyway so ignoring that we run the node server. It's now running correctly. It tells me that Yelp Camp has started. I'm going to go back here to localhost and load it. Okay. Sign up. Uh, I probably actually already have a user. Okay. So it logs me in. Uh, there's a bunch of random stuff in here from this database. So let's go ahead and add a new one. Uh, this one will be Hello World. Uh, two or three or whatever and then I'll choose an image so I'm gonna do a nice picture of Yosemite and a description this is a description for a cool campground oh yeah okay uh, so now we submit and it says I must supply an API key so here I am showing you how to do this tutorial and then I didn't even plug in my API key um, so I don't want to expose my API key, so let me go ahead and plug that in off camera real quick. Okay, so I'm back. I've plugged in my API key. Sorry about that. I'm gonna go back now, uh, refresh this. It's gonna ask me to log in. And now I'm going to add new campground. Trying this again. Please work. And we'll get an image uploaded for Yosemite. And then uh, okay, cool. This is a description for a campground. Yeah. So we'll submit it. And boom, there you have it. It uploaded the image. You can right click and copy image address and paste it in. You can see here it's going to Cloudinary and it has um, Cloudinary has created this name for it, etc. So I'm going to close that. Well, we can visit that if we want to. There's the image. So I'll close that, go back to the application. So now you have images that the user can dynamically upload. So just a word of warning, um, if you had Yelp Camp previously and um, you may have seen where I added some code that would only allow users to upload URLs for images from Unsplash. And that was because we had some trolls that were uh, going and just uploading a bunch of uh, NSFW pictures to various projects that were on Heroku that students had created. So this opens up that same problem. Now people can upload any picture they want. Okay, So that could be problematic, especially if you're trying to show your application to uh, like a potential employer. 
they pull up Yelp camp and then bam, they see a bunch of like horrible pictures or whatever. So uh, if we go to cloudinary.com, so if I can spell that right, I can't, there we go. They have services, uh, add-ons. So if you go to add-ons, they actually have um, a bunch of like AI type stuff that will check and see if someone is trying to uh, upload NSFW pictures. So like this one, for instance, Web Purify, you have to pay for it uh, unless you just want the 50 free moderations. But you can see the example here, if someone uploads something that's indecent, uh, then they will not let it be uploaded. Otherwise, if it's something you know that's fine, then you can upload it. Uh, I, that's not the only one they have. There's a couple others, so you can look through here and decide which one you want to use. But um, these are services that Cloudinary has as add-ons. They have a free tier, but if you really want it to work for like a production level application that's going to have a lot of uploads monthly, then you'd have to pay like a ten dollar fee per month or whatever. Okay, so uh, that's just something extra you can do. But that is it. Now you have image upload working in your Yelp camp. Okay, thanks a lot.